The New York Giants had themselves a good week seven as they recorded a victory over the Commanders at home. New York Post Sports columnist Steve Serby, he was in the building for the Giants' big victory. He joins us now from MetLife Stadium. Steve, how's it going? Good, Dex. How about you? I'm doing well. Giants fans are doing well. They got to see their team record a win. And, Steve, there's been some talk about Big Blue's offense looking more efficient with Tyrod Taylor under center. We'll get to that a bit later. But the defense today came up big against Washington, especially in the fourth quarter. Did the defense save the Giants' season here? Absolutely did. Uh, Dexter Lawrence was an absolute monster. Two sacks. Kayvon Thibodeau is starting to look like the – fifth overall pick that he was uh, in 2022. He had a sack and a half today. He's got 5.5 for the season. Um, Leonard Williams blocked the field goal. The Giants had five sacks in the first half, six in all. Kind of brought back memories of the old-time Giant defenses with LT and Strahan and O.C. and Tuck. And uh, came down to fourth and five at the seven. And Sam Howell threw behind Jahan Dotson. Jason Pinnock was there to finish it. Almost intercepted it, could have intercepted it. But you got the feeling that the Giants just refused to let the commanders into the end zone when it mattered and saved their season. And um, look, they had no Adoree Jackson either. He was set out with a neck injury. Deontay Banks, rookie first round pick, had his first interception. Um, was a sure tackler when he needed to make some sure tacklers. And Sam Howell, who they knew, they knew they could attack, was one for 15 on third down. And look, when you've got a defensive front playing like that and you, you've got a coordinator like Wink Martindale with his arsenal and array of blitzes, it was a nightmare for Sam Howell. And this is the type of team, the type of defense the Giants believe they are. Yeah, they believe they could play that. They definitely showed it today in this victory for sure. And, Steve, the Giants, just as a team, they hadn't looked good through the first six weeks. I assume the vibes were good in the locker room after this win. What do you think this win can do for this team going forward? And where's this confidence at right now? Well, they're talking in the locker room about what a family they are, how they have each other's backs, how they feed off each other. But, look. Momentum's important in the NFL. By the same token, it is a week-to-week -week league. Um, and next week, they've got the Jets who are coming off their bye and um, Giants home game. But if you look at the Giants' schedule, after the Jets, it's pretty, pretty favorable. You've got at Las Vegas, so definitely a winnable game, at Washington, Patriots at home, let me see here. What do I got? Packers at home, at New Orleans. All those games are winnable and losable, of course. And maybe the Giants will get Andrew Thomas and Daniel Jones back uh, from his neck problems. So, look, they needed the game. One and six, and they would have been dead. Two and five, they have a pulse. They didn't flinch. They played old-time throwback defense. And I know you're going to probably get to uh, Tyrod Taylor, but... Just a guess on my part. No, you're absolutely right. That's exactly where we're going next. We got to get there. We talked about the defense. Now we're going to talk about the Giants' offense, who they actually produced two first-half touchdowns. Uh, people have said that they've looked better with Tyrod Taylor playing under center. You saw the offense moving. They scored a touchdown at home. Couple, something they hadn't done all season. Is this team better with Tyrod Taylor playing under center right now? Come on, Dex. Are you, you're, not, you're, you're kidding, right? Listen, you, you got this. Is what some fans want to know. Some fans are I don't asking, care should about they what some fans want to know. I, I'm, I'm going to tell I'm you. A, I'm asking what the people want to know. That's all. I'm just doing that. I'm yeah. going to kill the messenger. How about that? Yeah, you, that I'll, I'll survive. No, look. <laughs> credit to Tyrod Taylor. He's thrown 51 passes now this season without an interception. His passer rating today was 116 point something. Hold on, I just dropped it. I'll be right. Be right back. Oh, here I am. Um, <laughs> Yeah, he, he looks efficient, no question. He broke that 220-minute and 42-second touchdown drought. Um, he's gotten uh, Darren Waller involved. Uh, Waller with the touchdown catch, Saquon Barkley with the touchdown catch. 
Uh, five different receivers caught balls of 20 or longer yards. Now, he is better right now at the deep passing game than what Daniel Jones has shown. But Tyrod, Tyrod's legs are not the weapon that Daniel Jones' legs are. And this is Daniel Jones' team. I'm sorry. Everybody wants to bash the $40 million man. Has he played well? No. Has an offensive line betrayed him? Yes. Uh, has Tyrod Taylor been unflappable? Yes. But I'm sorry. It's it's. I go right back to Daniel Jones as soon as his neck is fixed. And and if anything, maybe maybe this will light a little bit of a fire under Daniel Jones, knowing that the Giants have one of the best backup quarterbacks in the NFL that the team can win with as long as they play complimentary football the way they did today, and especially the way that Wink Martindale defense savaged Sam Howell. Yeah, and I think one thing that should be noted, and I brought the same question up to Brandon London, and he was mentioning that, look, this is what happens. You saw Tyra Taylor play well, who's a fantastic backup, but he had time today. Offensive line played better as they get healthier, and Daniel Jones gets healthier. Maybe you can see some of that better offense and complimentary football that you're talking about, Steve. But you know, Steve, you know this from covering sports for a long time in this market. And this is anywhere, honestly. People love a good quarterback controversy. You know that. You know they love that. You know it. Right, and they absolutely, and they love the backup quarterback. That's yep, always been the case. Mm -hmm. And especially when the backup quarterback has a better record than the starting quarterback. But Daniel Jones would have won this game today with that defensive performance behind him. Let's I, not forget that. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't disagree with you on that. And that let's is... not forget that Daniel Jones won a playoff game a year ago yes. and earned his $40 million contract. Yep, that's it. But, you know, some people, that's what have you I know. done for me lately. So, and, you know but then, though. yeah, some people say that, well, Tyrod Taylor had 116 point, what was it, 116.9 passer rating today. Daniel Jones hasn't done that this season. But let's see what happens when the offensive line gets a little more settled. Yep. And Saquon is, don't forget, Saquon is back. Daniel Jones did not have Saquon. Good point. For a few games there either. Yeah. So it's Daniel Jones' team. Case closed. Credit to Tyrod Taylor. Has done a great job. One of the best backup quarterbacks in the NFL. But Daniel Jones is the starter. There you go. Steve Serby with the final word there. He has put that talk, that question about whether the Giants should stick with Tyrod Taylor. Put that to rest. Get it out of here. But what Steve Serby did is give credit to the defense, saying that they have saved the Giants' season. It's now 2-5, and five, heading into a Week 8 matchup with the New York Jets. That is a great Steve Serby, New York Post sports columnist. Steve, thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Anytime. Thank you, Dex.